Hey guys, I'm Lucas. Welcome to KNews episode 30 about the Atlas V 401. The rocket is built by the United Launch Alliance, which is a joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed Martin. These are best known for their fighter jets and passenger airplanes. As mentioned, Atlas V will be brought to the launch pad in its 401 configuration. 4 stands for a 4 meter wide fairing, 0 for the amount of boosters, which well is none, and 1 for the single engine of its upper stage. Atlas V is currently powered by a Russian RD-180 engine, having a crazy amount of 4000 kN of thrust. It looks a little cheaty though because it has two nozzles, but these are fed by only one turbo pump. This means it is a single engine and they decided to feed two combustion chambers to split the load, decreasing the engine's thrust to weight ratio. The Zentaur upper stage is equipped with a less powerful but extremely efficient RL-10 engine. It could make a ton hover with a ton of fuel for roughly 450 seconds. This is usually referred to as the specific impulse or the engine's efficiency. Atlas V will launch tomorrow morning from Cape Canaveral, Florida and will head northeast for a 55 degrees inclined trajectory into one of the six GPS orbital planes. Yes, the payload is a GPS satellite, GPS to F12 to be precise, which stands for Global Positioning System Block 2F Satellite 12. It is the last of this particular block, which is basically a generation of satellites the older ones are replaced with. The next block or series is called GPS-3 and the first one of these won't launch earlier than 2017. As mentioned, GPS has six orbital planes where the satellites are placed equally spaced. There are currently 30 in operation which would mean there are 5 positions on each plane. However, that's not entirely true because there are spare satellites which can replace malfunctioning ones and the initial constellation consisted of 24 satellites, thus 4 on each plane. This initial constellation was expanded to 27 GPS satellites over the years in total, increasing the global coverage and leaving 3 and after this launch hopefully 4 in spare, should one of them malfunction or simply run out of fuel. After the Atlas V booster separation at 4 minutes into the flight, the Zentaur upper stage will ignite and burn for almost 13 minutes. It will then transition into a coasting phase, where it will fall to the highest point at approximately 20,000 km. At the so-called apoapsis, the RL-10 engine will reignite and burn for a second time to circulate its orbit which is followed by the payload separation. I'm not entirely sure at this point, but the Centaur upper stage might perform a deorbit burn afterwards. It is at least capable of doing so. However, it is not listed on the official execution plan, so it might also just become space junk. Just by the way, GPS is not the only positioning system out there. There are also the European Galileo, the Indian Regional Navigation System, the Chinese Baidu Navigation, the Japanese Quasi Zenith Satellite System and of course the Russian GLONASS, for which by the way a Soyuz rocket will launch in just a few days as well. Ok, as mentioned there are a few launches ahead which I won't be able to cover, but feel free to check the blog version for updates on these as well. My current plan is to add updates to what happens between two episodes on the latest ones. That was KNews episode 30 about Atlas V and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.